catching up with David Sparks, and his Shortcuts Field Guide for Mac. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc. Find doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Download the free ZocDoc app at ZocDoc.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community. Folks, sometimes time just gets away from you and people announce things and then they announce more things and then you realize that you haven't talked to them in so long. And that's what's happened to me with uh, David Sparks. Um, David, welcome back to Mac Voices. It's been entirely too long and it's all my fault. Thank you, Chuck. I, uh, I, uh, it's great to be here and talk to you again. As I tell everybody, you're like the inside the actor studio of all of us Mac nerds. I love coming in here and confessing my sins. <laughs> Well, well, feel free to confess anything you like, um, because I just confessed one of mine. Um, you know, I, I've I saw your notice come out for your uh, most recent course, and it's like, oh my god! Yeah. You know, I remember I don't even know how long ago it's been, David, that you decided to um, forego the uh, the practice of law in favor yeah, of January. being a f- yeah. January. Oh my god! Yeah. So you you are now a full time geek. Yeah, I am. I, I was kind of heading that way anyway, so I decided I should just make it official. And uh, I, I decided last October. It was one of those weird things, Chuck. You know, I hadn't always considered myself. You know, a lawyer becomes a part of your identity. You know what it's like when you're in business; sure. it just becomes part of you. And then you realize you're just too busy, and you start thinking, "Well, how can I make things better?" Well, I love doing the Max Parky stuff. It just, you know, it really feels like. Um, what I'm supposed to be doing for lack of a better term. And so I don't want to really scale that back. And I started thinking, well, I should scale back some of the clients. And then after a while I realized, well, what if I just scaled them all back? And uh, it was kind of a shocking revelation that uh, I did it. And it took about three months to get it all shut down. I announced it in January and uh, man, I haven't looked back. It feels like a lifetime ago already. You know, it's, I mean, it's great. I've, I've, I have to ask, what was your clients? What were your clients' responses to? Uh, uh, you to know, this? It, it was really mixed. I mean, because I, I had a lot of clients. I, I was specializing in small to medium sized businesses, so I had a lot of clients. Some of them I'd I'd represented for twenty two years, or twenty five. I was actually coming up on twenty um, eight years when I. So I was, anyway, I'd been representing some of them a long time. Some of them were like, "Oh, I can't believe you waited this long to do this." You know, some of them kind of were fully aware of Max Sparky and. They were super encouraging. Some of them had no idea at all that I did this other thing, and they were just shocked. You know, they didn't even know what to think. Um, some of them were worried for me. I, I remember one guy who called me the next day says, I, "I was up all night. I think you're having a midlife crisis, and I really want you to rethink this." You know, he's you know he was worried for me, which was nice. Um, so it was all sorts of reactions. I'll tell you one reaction that was pretty common that I didn't expect was most of them, once they kind of got over it, were like, okay, so who do I go to next? You know, cause I was helping them find new lawyers. That's why it took me three months. And uh, shockingly, if you think whatever it is you're doing out there in the world, that you are irreplaceable, don't think that very long because when you start telling the people, well, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. They're like, okay, eventually it just comes down to, well, who's going to do it for me now? And that's the end of it. <laughs> you know? So, uh, uh, I don't know what I was expecting, but a lot of them were just, just fine, you know, getting, moving on to the next guy. Well, I, I, I when you announced that, you know, my, that was my first thought is how many of your clients knew that you did this other thing and how many were going to be yeah. caught completely unawares. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. funny. At my old goal, my, my, at my old firm, my goal was for them to hear about this at my funeral, just to have no idea that this existed at all. But eventually my secret got out, but the, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a tough three months, honestly, because I wanted to get them handed off to good people and I wanted to make sure everybody landed safely, you know, but I also wanted to get started with my next big thing. And uh, it's, so it's been a really thrilling about nine months for me now as I've been going through this. I'm, I'm getting to the point now where it's getting a little more normal, but it's been crazy for me for a while. Well, that's, you know, I, like any job change, you've got some adjustments yeah. to make. And mm-hmm. especially when now the job is something you're building more or less as you go. Um, I mean, yeah. you had a lot of things in. <coughs> pardon me. You had a lot of things in place already, 
but yeah. I know you've been adding stuff as you've gone along. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing max parking now for 15 years. So, uh, yeah, I, I have built a lot, but you know, when I made it my own, my solo thing, then suddenly it felt, you know, like there were things that needed to be done. So I added the max Sparky labs in January and I just feel like the whole thing has been, I've been tightening down things that needed tightening down for years. I mean, it's obvious to anyone listening, but it's just remarkable how, how much easier and better you can do something when that's the only thing you do. I mean, uh, newsflash doing two jobs at the same time is hard and there are sacrifices on both sides, but the, uh, yeah, it's been great. Ah, that's, well, that's fantastic. Well, I know you, at the very least, you show up in my email box a whole lot more, it seems, um, with a, yeah. a little more analysis and in my RSS feeds as well. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, well, I was able to turn up the dial at the, at the blog and the newsletter. And then uh, I had the big thing I added was a subscription service, the Max Sparky allows, which lets people kind of on the inside of stuff I'm working on. And, uh, and I can do experiments like things that aren't quite ready for prime time. A lot of times go out to the labs members and they can kind of see things in progress. And, uh, it, you know, I really kind of just transitioned to the time I used to spend doing legal work to creating content for, uh, the people that follow Max Sparky and the podcasts and the field guides. And, man, I am just loving it so much. I, I can't, um, it's like, it's almost like you want to what is it, throw salt over your shoulder or something every time you talk about it. Cause it's so awesome that you can't believe it's real, you know? That's great. I'm just looking at you. I mean, you look so happy, um, in your little enclosure there. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, you know, it, it just, you can, you can just see how much fun you're having. Yeah. Well, I'm working on a better thing for the video stuff, but for now I've got a little screen. Yeah. But it works, you know. Yeah. I mean, with COVID, it was rough because my kids came back home. And so I got chased out of my little studio. And now I'm kind of in the middle of the house. But we're we're working on that. Well, and I see, as you had warned me pre-show, the sun is starting to creep up on you. So, Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was bad in choosing the time for recording today. But it's okay. <laughs> you know what? I will take it. I will take it for your audience. All right. I'm ready, well, guys. I'll put my right. sunglasses on later. <laughs> and let's make him sweat, folks. We we got him in the light. We'll get the rubber hose out and go. <laughs> so so the labs, you just told us what the labs are. And I applaud you for that because that takes a certain amount of courage, I think, to let people see, you know, kind of behind the scenes and maybe yeah. m- maybe into projects that will never see fruition. Yeah, but it's really fun, Chuck. I mean, I, and it's kind of evolved over the six months. I mean, like I do a a weekly, like new summary podcast for them and there's different levels. So some of them we do more like kind of educational deep dives and some of them we do more just like, this is what's going on. And, um, I love sharing this stuff and I always get great feedback from the viewers and readers and listeners. And it's like a virtuous cycle because then sometimes they come up with ideas that feed me and it's just, you know, we're in a wonderful community here with the Apple technology fans. I mean, it's just not that hard. I mean, when I talk to people who are doing this in other sectors, you get all these negative people and all this hate and anger, and you just don't get that with the people that are in our world. That's a really interesting point. I know we've you and I have talked about it, and it's been a, a mainstay of Mac Voices, just the positivity that is around us um, and the great people we have in our community. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and it really is. I feel like um, that's something we need now more than ever. I feel like so much of the world these days is engineered at trying to drag you down and um, to have a little, little uh, bastion of joy it's a good thing. Agreed. Agreed. So the labs, we have the labs. Folks know about the Max Sparky newsletter. Um, anything else before we dig into some of the more recent field guides? Well, I mean, the the big one is the uh, release of the shortcuts for Mac field guide. That one was a year in the making. It's, it was the longest production schedule of any field guide I've ever had because, um, you know, shortcuts for Mac had a troubled beginning. It's one of the uh, first apps uh, that Apple built through Swift UI, which is their new uh, programming system. And, you know, the team really, you know, it's, it, they call it in technology, eating your own dog food. And, you know, Apple ate its own dog food. They built a, a big boy automation application using a new 
you know, kind of programming paradigm called Swift UI. Well, as a result, it, it had a rough beginning and it got a lot better over the year. But as a result, uh, someone making uh, teaching materials on it, I really had to like go back to the drawing board multiple times to kind of get it right. But uh, I'm really happy with the way it came out. And that's out now. It's eight and a half hours of uh, teaching materials on uh, shortcuts for Mac. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by ZocDoc. Find doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. If you're a fan of it, sushi is incredible. But gas station sushi? Not so much. Finding the right sushi makes all the difference. The same goes for finding the right doctor. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you, in your network, and in your neighborhood. One that makes you feel like you're in good hands, you're supported, and you're heard, even if you're telling them about your favorite sushi place. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with just a few taps. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. If I need a quality doctor, ZocDoc is where I go. Go to ZocDoc.com slash MacVoices and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then, start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash MacVoices. ZocDoc dot com slash MacVoices. Thanks to ZocDoc for supporting this week's Mac Voices. Now, folks that don't do this kind of thing don't understand that eight, eight and a half hours probably did take, you know, how many hours of recording, re-recording, re-editing, re-re-re-recording. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. um, you know, it's, that, it's, if, yeah, I know. When I when I do the math, it's depressing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I love making it, and I, I love getting those emails from people saying, "Oh, I just made this really cool shortcut based on the stuff you taught me." Thanks so much. I mean, uh, I really love it. I, I've been thinking a lot about my life, you know, obviously with all these changes and. You know, everybody talks about being content creators and they have all these fancy names, but really I think fundamentally as Max Sparky, I'm a teacher, you know, and I like to teach about technology related productivity related topics. And the, um, the shortcuts for Mac is a perfect example of that. I, I just want to teach people how to use this awesome tool that only gets better every day with the way, you know, Apple's developing things. And, uh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, well, that's great. So, this the shortcuts field guide. Um, I, I hesitate to ask who it's for, but that's what I'm going to do. I want to ask who it's for. Is it the, yeah. for the rank beginner, or is it someone that has already gotten their feet wet and is looking to take it to the next level? Well, I, I would like to say it's for both. I mean, marketer here, right? But the um, my whole philosophy with teaching technology has always been kind of what I call the on-ramp theory. And if you listen to an episode of Mac Power Users or if you look at any of the materials I've created, I always start out very basic. And I spend a lot of time on getting the basics down, how it works, how you do this basic stuff. The, you know, Some of the very first shortcuts I teach are super simple. Uh, but I always felt like anybody who's interested in this stuff, if they understand the basics and you build upon it progressively, they can become advanced users. Um, there are people out there who are super advanced in shortcuts. I'd like to hope they can get something out of the course. But um, I, but I'd also like to think there are people out there who've never opened shortcuts, and I'd like to think they can get something out of the course. Uh, one of the features I've been adding with the last few that I shipped, this one in the Devon Think Field Guide, is I do what I call power user interviews, where I talk to people who are power users of these tools, and we get samples from them and talk to them what they do. And that's like a thing I think would help a power user to get get further. But at the same time, there's stuff in the basics. If you look at the outline for this course, it starts with basic concepts. It then goes through triggers and actions and like a, a thorough digest of all the, the tools that are available to you. Because with shortcuts, that's the trick. You just got to know it's there. If you know it's there, then you can do something with it. And then I go through, go to the, I don't get to the advanced concepts till you get through all of that. And then we go through the programming loops and the, you know, functions and variables and some of the stuff that's more advanced. And then after that, I've got a whole section of useful shortcuts, just cool shortcuts that I made that you might want to try out or modify yourself. So I consider it a journey, Chuck, and I would really love to see, you know, people go on it. 
Um, okay, so you you teased something else that I definitely wanted to touch on, and that's the Devon Think Guide. Um, because yeah. I, I feel like Devon Think is one of those programs that never gets enough recognition for the power yeah. that it delivers. I mean, it's, I it's one of those things that whatever you do, you can probably benefit from Devon Think. Yeah, I think the hard, the hard part with Devon Think is kind of getting your arms around what it is, you know, because it's many things, but I think fundamentally what it is, is it's a replacement finder with a ton of tools. And I, I think that I, I'm probably not doing it justice, but what I mean is with Devon Think, you can dump files into it and it will index it for them. It'll search it for them. It'll use artificial intelligence, but it also adds all these layers of metadata on top that you don't get with the typical finder, you know? So a lot of research scientists and people who are studying things will just put it all in dev and think and go from there. And I find that it's really quite useful, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I use it, um, to organize, uh, to, to go paperless, put it that way. So I don't use nearly the, the full power of it, but what I use it for, it's flawless because I never lose anything. It does exactly what I want it to do. And yet I know all this other powers that are waiting for me. Should I ever need to do something else or do something completely different with it. Devon think can import your files and work from them, or it can work from an external database. But um, in addition to becoming like this replacement finder, it's also a really powerful tool for what I like to call contextual computing, where you can link anything in a Devon think database to anything else, because any file, even a page of a PDF file can become a URL link. So you just right click on it in Devon think and say, copy as link. And then if you've got something like Obsidian or Craft or some other management system where you're taking notes on a thing and you want to link back to a file in DevonThink, you just paste that link and you click it and it opens DevonThink, it brings you right back to that page. And that gives you that laser focus to go between DevonThink and your other resources. And that's just not available. I mean, they don't have that in the Finder. Apple doesn't really make it easy there. There's some stuff you can do with iCloud, but it's not the same. And, you know, the team at Devon think is just constantly getting better at this and making it better. And, um, the other thing I always like to say about Devon think because it's so true is that it's one of those apps that used to be a powerhouse on the Mac, but it survived the cloud, you know, integration of our computers. Like there were other apps like remember circus ponies notebook. I mean, there were, there sure. were other apps that we used to have that were very good. But as the world went to, you know, the truth is in the cloud and the idea of cloud-based store, data storage, uh, a lot of those apps didn't make it. And Devon Think did. That's because the people behind it worked really hard on it. And it's a very good player with cloud stuff. In fact, it's one of the only apps where you can add your own password to your data. So it's really uh, two-factor uh, encryption. I'm sorry, it's... Uh, it is a full encryption, both up and down. So you actually are protecting your data better. I mean, there's just a lot to like about it, which is why I made the field guide, because I felt like people just didn't get it. You make an interesting point, though, about the evolution of things. Um, I think that's something that too often gets overlooked in what we do and in the tools we use, that the tools that you were using, unless you were one of those curmudgeons that just stopped making any yeah. updates, um, the tools that you're using now are not the tools you were using two or three years ago because there have been updates, there have been new features. They are, in some cases, slightly different, in a lot of cases, radically different. But you evolved along with it, and you didn't even notice it was happening. Yeah. Like, like just look at right now the what I can only call a revolution of note-taking. I mean, the uh, have you heard all the the discussions lately of apps like obsidian and Rome and a oh. backlinked notes apps. I Absolutely. mean, that stuff didn't exist. And it's basically a wiki built into a notes app where you can link things back and forth, but then there's additional features they're adding on. These are technologies that have in some ways lasted, been around a long time, but only recently really been brought with any sort of emphasis to a notes app. And they're amazing and they're changing the way we take notes. And I love that when we as computer users get to go through these transitions. And that's particularly exciting to me right now because there's so many of them and they're all evolving so quickly. Who knows how it's all going to shake out in a few years, but it's, it's kind of fun to be here as it's happening. I, I agree. 
and you know sometimes you find that uh, these 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 are not applications in search of a problem, but they are applications that can solve a problem or that you didn't know you had, or yeah. it, they can give you the power to do something that you didn't really know exactly that you wanted to do, but it fixes a, a challenge point that you've had. Yeah, agreed. I mean, and they kind of relate to Devon thing, frankly. I mean, the, all this stuff kind of ties together. Um, there's there's an overarching thought to my thoughts of technology over the last few years, and it's that I feel like technology has failed us. Um, we, uh, you know, we had this promise. You and I are of an age where we actually saw computers come into existence, and we saw the consumer uh, computer show up, and we heard all the promises that they were going to make our lives easier going to allow us to get our work done faster, get home earlier. And somewhere along the way, the the technology industry lost the thread, in my opinion. And what happened was they realized they could monetize our attention. And so the focus of the computer industry went, or technology industry, went from how can we help people be more productive to how can we make more money off each person. And I think that is a big focus. If you go up to Silicon Valley and look around, a lot of the companies there are basically advertising companies because they are selling our attention. Um, So a lot of people have, with technology, they're actually in worse shape than they were before. You know, uh, technology has made it harder to stay focused. It's made it harder to get the important work done as opposed to the unimportant work done. And it's just in general being throwing hand grenades in front of us. But I feel like for folks who care about this, folks who want to fight the system, uh, technology can still serve you, but you have to go find the tools and make it work for yourself because the industry as a whole would much rather you spend a lot of time at a social media application than actually doing your work because they make more money that way. Um, So that's the thing. If you look at everything I make, it's aimed at that, at bringing the person who's who's accessing my material uh, closer to beating the odds to using technology to actually get the most important work done that's important to them and giving them time to enjoy their lives and that's that's everything I do Chuck that's all I want to do is I want to I want to spread the good word about that and I want people to pick that up and uh, that's you know that's what I'm up to that's the reason I quit being a lawyer frankly is I want to that's that's my mission at this point David Sparks is back in the next edition of Mac Voices to talk about the evolution of our software tools, how his legal education informed the way he approaches his field guides, and he gives us a little bit different perspective on the Mac and the iPad and the potential of them coming together. That's next time on Mac Voices, and I hope you'll join us. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.